In this video, we're going to be talking about OpenAI's playground in depth. To get to the playground, you first go to openai.com and then click on API. Log in if you have an account or sign up. Once you sign in, then you will find yourself in this main screen. It says, welcome to OpenAI. A quick little tip is to go to the examples and take a look at some of the examples that OpenAI provides. You can open these in the playground itself and start playing right away. Another good link to visit is the documentation. OpenAI has a very comprehensive documentation, and please take a look. Here's a large text input field where you can type in whatever you like. There's a button to submit this to get a response from GPT-3. And on the right side, you have some settings. Currently, they're all in their default settings. I have started a sentence saying, between FastAPI and Flask, I prefer colon and then I quote. If I click Submit, then I get a response that says Fast API and a bunch of explanation why. The reason is because the token limit is set to 256, and about 1.6 tokens make up a word on average. You can think of it like that. And because the token limit is set to 256, GPT-3 can tend to write elaborate explanations, so on and so forth. If you wanted to limit this, you can do it one of two ways. First, we can try to put a stop sequence. Stop sequence is up to four sequences where the API will stop generating further tokens. For example, here in this case, we can use a quote, and then you press tab. And then now when we press submit, it starts with fast API. And then when it comes to the quote, it stops. It, it doesn't write the quote. We can also try enter line break is a stoppage point and then if you try again there we go it puts it puts the ending quotation and a dot but it doesn't go on to the next line alternatively we could have limited the token size for example if we say just one token and run it then it will just say fast in this case then fast is costing us one token we already increased the token size to two and then run it again. And we still get fast. Next, let's talk about models. By default, the playground is set to the latest model, which is currently is Text DaVinci 003. If you click, you get a list of other models that you can use. Text DaVinci 003, Text Query 001. You can also read what they're good at to the pop-up with the pop-up window that opens up. For example, it says that the TextBabbage 001 is capable of straightforward tasks, very fast and lower cost. Strength is moderate, moderate classification and semantic search. As you see, there is this circle over here next to the models. This indicates the size of the model. For example, TextDaVinci, I believe, is 175 billion parameter model. So this, this is why it can tend to be slow and, well, more expensive in comparison to, let's say, Curie, which I believe is around 15 billion parameters. And down here, we have the codex, the code writing tools. And there are also other models when you click here. You can give it a try and see which one is your favorite. But obviously, the text DaVinci 003 is the most capable. And if you're writing code, code DaVinci 003, 002 is going to be the most capable. On the other hand, I would like to mention that text DaVinci 003 it's proven to me very capable in writing code as well. So I tend to use it a lot more than Codex DaVinci these days. Now let's talk about temperature. Temperature controls randomness. It goes from zero all the way up to one and anything in between. Uh, by default, it is set to 0 0.7. To better be able to understand what temperature does, at the bottom of our options, there is a drop-down menu called Show Probabilities. Let's turn on the full spectrum. When we do this and generate again, we get Fast API. Do you see this color coding right now? If you click on these tokens, we see that Fast had a 98% chance to be the response. And as you see, and Quote Dot had 69% chance, and Just the Quote had 20% chance. So what happens with the temperature is that as the temperature approaches one, 
the model becomes more likely to be able to choose from some of the other examples with lower probabilities. When the temperature closes to zero, and when it is zero, it will only choose the highest probability outcome. Let's give another example of temperature. Let's say you can increase the token count to say 50 and then get another completion. Here we go. So you can click on every token and get its probabilities. Modern had 80% probability and it was chosen. Fast in this case was chosen. See, but it had 36% probability. Actually here, the high had the most likelihood probability present, but then fast was chosen. This is due to the temperature and creator here was actually the fourth option of the model but he was able to choose that now if you were to recreate this response from scratch with temperature zero as you see it's always choosing the top probability another option which is similar to temperature and controls the model's pick out of a probability distribution is top p to be able to see what top B does, again, let's get a response. Okay. So when we click on like one of these probability distributions, we see that one, two, three, four, five options are given to the model. 99.99% .99 of all probabilities are covered in these five examples. And if we click on another one, which is the one, then there is one, two, three, four, five examples, but only 73% of all probabilities are covered in these top five examples. So there are other probabilities that the model can consider. It's just that for ease of use and visibility, readability, the, AP, the playground only displays the top five. What the top P does is it controls out of how many options the model will consider is a completion in the playground. One means it will consider all options. 0 0.5 will mean that it will consider half of the options. So in this case, if we were to go to fast API, since the, almost all the options are these five options, then it will consider the top three or top two, for example. And if you bring it to zero, then it will only consider the top probability. So it's very much so like temperature, but top B will limit the options and temperature will limit which one of the available options that the model would likely be picking for completions. Frequency penalty is how much to penalize new tokens based on their existing frequency. On the other hand, presence penalty is how much to penalize new tokens based on whether they appeared in the text so far. The difference between frequency penalty and presence penalty is that frequency counts how many times a word had appeared in the text and then increasingly penalizes and presence penalty takes into account even the word had appeared only once in the text so if your completions are becoming repetitive you can actually increase these in different amounts and see if it helps best of will generate multiple completions and pick the best one for you so if you were to increase it to two three or any amount then you will actually get a total of whatever the number is here of generations that is to be choose from and the API will only display the best one. Now be careful with best of because you are paying for every token that is generated in all eight of the completions in this case. You can go all the way up to 20. Just be careful but this can be useful depending on your use case. Inject start text and inject restart text can be very useful. Here we are having a question and answering system set up. And the question is, how many trees are there in an average forest? Given the inject start text, I put in enter, enter, answer, line break, line break, answer. And I just use my keyboard keys to be able to do this. And inject restart text is new line, new line, question. Now, when this happens, the start text will start the model with whatever is written here. So it will go to the next line and then next line, and it will write answer. And then we'll continue with the completion. And when it is done with its completion, then it will come to this restart text. It will make a new line and a new line, and then start with a new question prompt to the user. Let's click Submit. So it says, gives an answer, and then goes to the question and stops. This is similar to stop sequences. You can use both of them in conjunction. Inject start text and inject restart text 
is very useful and a bit different than the stop sequence because you can organize your completions in a way that you would like to see. There are different modes to OpenAI's Playground. Uh, the first one, default one, is a complete. The second one is an insert. And the third one is edit. These can be very useful. I don't much use insert, but I certainly definitely use edit a lot, especially in my coding and programming. Let's go to insert. Here we have the question. The exact same prompt is pre presented here. Uh, what you can do is make a square brackets and I say insert and I close the square brackets and then you have to choose whatever model and then click submit and the model will insert here whatever it thinks is necessary and in this case it's inserting the answer which wasn't present in the original the reason the answer wasn't present because it was a um, inject starting sequence so it wasn't part of the prompt or the completion edit is one of my favorite tools you can use edit in a number of different ways but it's probably best and is also the OpenAI suggestion to start empty if you like to especially in coding you don't have to do it this way but let's say python for loop n times for random numbers now it's usually better to give it a more uh, elaborate and detailed description but let's see what happens here we get a loop import random for i for i in range 10 print random random 1 to 10. now this is great we can use this as an input and then we can say well python loop for 100 times and when we click submit we should be able to modify the range which is 100 but it left the random number threshold between 1 and 10. if we were to say between 20 and 30 and if you were to say thousand times loop then hopefully you should be able to modify both the range and the range of the randomness that you're looking for so it is very useful in uh, situations like these i actually use it for debugging i made a few videos making heavy use of edit mode in playground to be able to debug your code uh, i'll probably put a link in the description Another thing to note is that whatever we had on edit transfers back to the complete and transfers back to the insert mode so that they keep their context. Now let's talk about these buttons up here. When you actually have been working on a prompt and you're building a system and you're happy with where you're at or you're going to take a break, you can actually save with the name and description to be used later, uh, later on. And it will load up and you can load them up from your uh, presets right over here. So you can continue your work another very useful feature is this view code when you click on view code you get an entire python or node.js or curl or json uh, file for being able to use the api and actually whatever was in your prompt right in the openai's playground text box is actually put in to the prompt for you including with all your settings for example the temperature mixed opens top p frequency penalty presence penalty such and so on and you can just copy and paste it into your favorite id let's see what these buttons do right next to the submit button let's say we want to get a completion for this for loop when we get our completion and a sample output you can actually click this to do undo last to go back to where we started and when we regenerate again and sometimes you have to go multiple times this one actually regenerates from where you left off and here the show history will actually show you all your progress so you can actually go back to any moment in time and continue from where you were left, where you left off at that point we should cover uh, most of what you can do with OpenAI's Playground. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're enjoying EchoHive's contents, please like and subscribe for to be notified for future videos. Take care and see you in the next video.